Hello, in this video I'm going to go over an OCRA Mechanics A-level question. It's from one of the practice papers written by the OCR examiners, so, but was never, actually, was never actually taken. It was like a specimen paper. Um, it should be useful for other boards as well, but obviously in the style of OCRA. Okay, I've drawn, drawn the diagram separately before doing the video here. I'm doing a good diagram is quite important here. Here we have a situation where it tells us various things like it's a uniform rod, so therefore the weight is in the middle or the center of mass of the rod is in the middle, so we can re re replace it with a single weight in the middle. And then things like the, the there's another weight placed at B there for an, an external force also at B at that at that angle and then I've put in the normal contact force here and the frictional contact force here and this question refers to and it this kind of refers to a coefficient of friction it's looking for an inequality whenever you see anything that implies an inequality we use a kind of limiting case f is limited to mu r has got to be less than or equal to mu r so a seven mark question quite a lot to do um, set up a few equations so quite a typical format with these is three equations two resolving equations and a and a moments equation and that's how this question is going to fit as well so i'm going to resolve Horizontally, it's going to be a relatively straightforward question to uh, things to set up. We can see that the horizontal component here would be x sine 30, or at least we should see, because the angle I've marked on there is 30, and it's away from that. So that's x sine 30. And then we've got the, that's going to be kind of counterbalanced with the f. So f minor equals zero, or indeed we could go straight to f equals to x sine 30 if we wish. Because those are the only two forces. The rest have a vertical component. That's vertical, vertical, vertical. So those three aren't going to come into our horizontal equation. So now let's resolve horizontally, vertically, should I say. Now, we now have the component that we're considering, which is this perpendicular component, which is x cos 30. Up there. So that's going upwards. And then everything else is going either straight up or straight down. So we've got plus r minus w minus 2w equals zero or feel free to cut to the chase forces up equal forces down I suppose we'll get away with combining the two and the one w there pretty easily because they combine uh, very easily adding one and two so those are two very relatively straightforward uh, equations to get and that's often the case with these moments that people forget to, that the resolving equation can be quite an important uh, thing to do um, obviously, there's always going to be a moment uh, equation involved as well. And for example, if this question only asked for what x was, which it hasn't asked for in this question, but if it said find x, all we would need to do is take moments about a. We, we need to take moments about a anyway, because we need to find x so that we can get expressions for f and r in terms of w, which will then enable us to gain our inequality. Anyway, moments about A. We've got two ways of um, taking moments. The one we did in class recently was just to do it directly and just to mark on the, the perpendicular distances. So about the thing moving across there like it did. Uh, this perpendicular distance is A cos 30 because of this triangle here. And then Obviously, this distance here is 2a cos 30 because of this triangle here. So, 
Though, or there's another method for doing this, which I'll mention just in case people prefer to do it this way. The other way is to kind of resolve the actual force itself into two bits. And this bit here will be the W cos 30. And this one here doesn't come into the moments. That will be W sine 30, but it doesn't matter. And so then you get that you can just times this distance here by this force here, because those two are then perpendicular. And similarly for this one. That can be done, but I've done it more directly looking at the perpendicular forces of the force itself rather than the components. So um, that and then the other perpendicular distance that we need for our equations is this. Obviously, that's 2A. Uh, looking at the kind of sense of these moments, this one's anti-clockwise and these two are going the opposite way clockwise. So those two are going to balance each other out or kind of counteract each other. So let's write that in our equation. Let's do the anti-clockwise one first. That's the x. So that's x. And then that is times by 2a. The force x times by its perpendicular distance 2a, which I've just taken off the diagram there. OK. Then that's going to be going in the, the anti-clockwise sense. This force, that's going to be W times by A cos 30 there. So that's W A cos 30. Should say 2A there. And then this here. That's 2w times by the perpendicular distance, which is the 2a cos 30 there. So 2a cos 30 there. Or 2w times by 2a cos 30 equals to 0. Right, OK, so that's actually going to get us X in terms of W pretty readily, pretty quickly. If I rearrange that, I'm going to have, well, first of all, A cancels. Which it often does with these things because it's a moment's equation. And I'm going to get 2X equals to 5W cos 30. And cos 30 is the square root of 3 over 2. So I'm going to get x is equal to 5 over 4 w square, 5 over 4 square root of 3 w. OK, so that is going to be mean that I'm going to um, be able to substitute my x into, um, into this equation here and this equation here. And then I'm going to be able to get F in terms of W and R in terms of W. And then I'm away, really. Uh, let me just make a bit more space for myself here. Um, so there we go. OK. And so it's just a case of just doing a bit of substitution now. So. Right. So we've got substitute X. So we have F is equal to 5 over 4, the square root of 3, W, sine 30. Now sine 30 is a half, so that gives me F is equal to 5 over 8, the square root of 3, W. And then substituting into this one, I'm going to get X cos 30. So that's 5 over 4, the square root of 3, w times by the square root of 3 over 2, because it costs 30 square root of 3 over 2, plus r equals 3, w. Combining these two together, that's going to be 15 over 8, w, plus r is equal to 3, w. So taking the 15 over 8, w to the other side. I'm going to get that's 9w over 8.
I'll be alright. So as I say, in these, whenever we see anything which talks about an inequality and there's a coefficient of friction involved, almost certainly we're just going to be using this inequality. F is less than or equal to mu r. So we have 5 over 8 the square root of 3 w is less than or equal to mu times 9 over 8 w. And we can see w cancels, square root of the 8 cancels, and we are left with w uh, mu is greater than or equal to 5 the square root of 3 over 9. So that's the least it can be. It has to be more than that. So it, if it's any less than that, this thing's going to slip or topple or whatever. So that's uh, that's part, our part A of the question done. Seven marks. Looking at the mark scheme, you're probably going to get one for this. You're probably going to get one for this. You're probably going to get two for this. I haven't looked at it carefully, but you might want to have a look. So we've got four of our marks already. And then a couple for combining, something like that. And then the final inequality. Right, okay, so there's the big part done. Um, I have a sense that um, a lot of people might mm, kind of get mixed up with the, so the two mark bit. When it talks about the magnitude of the contact force, they mean kind of combining these two. That's the normal contact force. And this is the frictional contact force. So it's telling us that those two combined using the kind of normal, the Pythagoras kind of combining the two is equal to 39. So square root of 39. So we're told that Basically, the square root of the combined, the resultant combined using Pythagoras of r squared plus f squared equals to the square root of 39. Obviously, we can get rid of the square root and cut to that. So um, we've got expressions for r and f, so we're, that, that's why there's only two marks for it. So we've got expressions for r and f. r equals to 9 over 8w. That's squared plus and f is this here five over eight the square root of three w squared equals thirty nine. So we have this will be eighty one over sixty four w squared, and this is fifteen times three, which is seventy five over 64 w squared equals to 39 so that gives us 156 w squared over 64 equals 39 that gives us w squared i think if we could reorganize that because there's four of these w squared is equal to 16 so w equals 4. So that's it. That's a not easy, not that difficult, but uh, challenging enough moments of question from OCRA following a fairly, fairly standard format, resolving horizontally, resolving vertically, and as all work, because it's a moments thing and a moments equation and combining. And then this nice little kind of twist on it at the for part b where we had to combine a frictional and reaction force or normal contact force to work something out okay hope you found the video useful goodbye folks